So regardless of where you're at with your credit journey, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can get to a perfect credit score with zero money out of your pocket using our perfect credit formula. And what we're gonna cover is what a credit score is, now the ranges of your credit score, what impacts your credit, and the elements that you can do to get you to a perfect credit to reach an 800 credit score. Let's get into it. So the topic of a credit score is essentially is a number that dictates your behavior on how well you're managing credit. So the ranges for a credit score is gonna be anywhere from 300 to an 850. So let's just go ahead and start off with the bottom of the numbers. So the 300 to 600 means that you have a very poor credit score. Most likely a lender will either deny you for credit or if you're going to, for example, buy a car, they may give you a very high interest rate, maybe a 15 to 20%, meaning that you're paying about three to five times more for that same piece of vehicle versus somebody who would have a great credit score. When you range anywhere from the 600s to about a 660, you're in the fair credit score range, meaning that some lenders will lend to you, some may not, depending of course on what you're trying to to accomplish. When you get from the 660 to about a 700, you're in a good credit score, meaning that, yay, some people might give you a credit card, um, better interest rates on cars or mortgages. It's great, but you still need a little bit of work, or maybe you don't have enough history revolving around it. Now, when you go from the 700 to about a 740, you're in a great credit score range. That means you have a lot more options to either get 0% credit cards, better interest rates on houses and cars. But right when you hit the 740 to about the 800s, that you're in an excellent range. And that means that you can go out there and get anything you want. Credit cards, loans, personal loans, mortgages, cars. At the best interest rates, you're going to pay less for that monthly payment and qualify for that. When you're in the 800s to 850 you're like a credit god. That means that you can do whatever you want for the best interest rates as well. You have options out in the marketplace. So now that we covered a little bit about your credit score and what the ranges are, so you may wanna ask yourself, hey, where am I in my credit journey? Am I on the low end? Am I in the high end? Or am I in the right in the middle? So we've helped thousands of people raise hundreds of thousands of dollars. We utilize credit as one of the main factors into acquiring this capital for either for business funding, either personal, business, whatever that is. I'm gonna go ahead and explain what we call the perfect credit formula, the factors that go into a credit score. And by understanding the perfect credit formula, it can really help you dictate and gauge where are you in your journey and then what you need to do to correct it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So to be able to get to an 800 credit score, you need to be able to have and understand these five factors. Now, one of the first ingredients to the perfect credit formula is the types of credits. So for example, we have uh, different types of credit like a mortgage loan, right? Just like a house that you're trying to purchase. You also have your auto loans. Then you have your revolving lines, like a credit card or a personal line of credit, and then an installment, like a personal loan that you're wanting to get from the bank, like a cash loan. These are all very important to have a mixture of what's on your credit profile. So for example, what I recommend is to have a minimum of around three to five revolving lines, like credit cards. Then you have installment loans. Maybe one to two installment loans will look great on the mixture of credit. Now, when you're looking out and wanting to qualify for you know, a $50,000 or $100,000 loan, right? If it's, for example, for your business, Right? A banker is going to look at your credit and see, hey, what is the history of that credit report and the, what we call comparable credits. So by having enough revolving lines will help you get larger credit cards approved for your business or your personal credit report. Now, let's just say that you don't have any revolving lines. You know, what would you do? So you can go to one of the major banks like a Bank of America or a Chase for example, and acquire something called a secured credit card. And a secured credit card means that, hey, I'm gonna be providing the bank 200 to $500, give them the cash, let them hold on to it. And because of that deposit, they're gonna give you a credit card for that line. This can help you establish your types of credit on your credit report. And so you can do that with multiple different types, even through installment, you can give the person or the bank $1,000, they give you $1,000 in a cash loan. Now, it's much easier for you to acquire a auto or a mortgage loan because it's secured, meaning that, hey, if I don't pay for this car, they're going to be able to take the car away. So they have collateral. And so being able to have a mixture of your credit cards or unsecured debt and a difference between having a secured line like a car, you can have a mixture of those two that can help you expedite 
your credit journey with the types of credits. Now, the second piece of the perfect credit formula is going to be the age of your credit. This is where I really emphasize on having that three to five credit cards, one to two installment loans, and have it on your credit profile for as long as you can, right? The longer of establishment, the higher the score goes up. So you want to have a minimum around two years of age on a credit card, on a loan, or a mortgage, or a car. This gives the banker enough history of your payment history, which is one of the third aspects of your perfect credit formula. So you want to make sure that you don't have any late collection charge-offs on your credit report because any of these lates can stay on your credit report for seven to 10 years. And that can be a very big detriment to your credit score. As your scores are climbing up, one 30-day late can really drop your score about 100 points. Now, what I recommend is by putting all of your payments on auto pay. So you want to be systems dependent, not human dependent. So you go on vacation for a whole month and you forget to make that payment because you're having such a great time. You're at the beach. Shoot, just forgot to make that payment. My score can drop 100 points because of that 30 day late. So if you put on auto pay, even the minimum payment, that can really help save your credit profile. Now, one of the next parts of the perfect credit formula is your credit utilization. Now, this could be a huge factor of how your score fluctuates. You ever some, sometimes wonder, you're looking at your credit report, and you're like, hey, today I'm a 700, next month I'm at a 650. Well, that's because your credit utilization is very high, right? It fluctuates. So the rule of thumb is you don't want to be over 30% usage of your credit card. So for an example, if you have a credit card with a $10,000 limit, you don't want to go over $3,000 as a 30% ratio. So if you start going over, you start looking like a higher risk factor to these lenders. I Means like, hey, if you're borrowing somebody's money and you're carrying that debt for a long period of time, your score will go down because now you're a higher risk factor. So I recommend keep it down below 30%. Now, one thing to really know about your credit utilization is your payment due date. Right, So you have your payment due date and then your closing statement date. The balance on that date is what gets reported to the credit bureaus. So I don't care if you max out your credit cards, but on that payment due date, you want to bring that down, let it rest for about two or three days and let it close. Then the balance of that date gets reported to the credit bureaus. So that's how you can really manage and fluctuate your credit um, and use your card at your leisure without having to affect your credit score. Now, the last piece of the perfect credit formula is your credit inquiries. Now, even though this is a low percentage of how it affects your score, but the rule of thumb is no more than six inquiries per six months. That means that, hey, if I have six inquiries on TransUnion, six inquiries on Experian, six inquiries on Equifax. Now, when you try to apply for that seventh inquiry, a lender can look at you and say, this guy's been shopping. And that can then result in a denial because of what they call excessive inquiries. So I recommend that you don't apply for more than three to four to give yourself a little bit of a buffer within that six month period to make sure you understand, hey, if I'm going to apply for an American Express that they're going to pull an Experian credit report. If I'm going to apply for a Citibank, they may pull an Equifax. By knowing and understanding the rules of the game before you apply will really help you improve your chances of an approval by being able to fluctuate your inquiries. And when you apply the whole perfect credit formula into your credit profile, you can increase your score anywhere from 30 to 50 to 100 points. I remember one client that I used to have that he had just maxed out credit cards at 100% usage. We worked very creatively on reducing that to about a 10 to 20% utilization, his score went up around 100 points because of that small shift. The difference between a 650 and a 750 is night and day within how these lenders look at you. And we were able to get him approved for about $50,000 because of that. So now pulling this whole thing all together, we went over what is a credit score and what affects it. Now the mechanics of what goes behind a credit score and then some aspects of what you can do to fix your scenario. So the first thing that I would say is really get a hold of your credit reports. Understand the perfect credit formula and look at that meter and see where you at in this mix and then what you can do to fix it. Okay, so if it's high credit usage, you need to remove those inquiries, whatever it is to be able to increase your scores above a minimum of a 700 credit score. And if you don't wanna do this all by yourself, go ahead and click on the link below 
and my team and I will be able to reach out and we can have a simple conversation about how we can help you, one, master your credit or raise capital through the business funding aspects. We've helped thousands of people raise over $100 million in funding. And I'll go ahead and see you in the next video.